lot of technologies at work. Um, now, when we say digital storytelling, there is a classic pedagogy. It was designed in the 1990s by a group that was called the Center for Digital Storytelling. They're now called Story Center. Wonderful people. And they devised this curriculum, three-day workshop, and the idea was anybody, and initially when they built this, was anyone off the street. They actually had a storefront. And anybody, it doesn't have to be you know, a technologist, it could be anybody, can end up with a three-minute digital video. The trick was they had to appear with an autobiographical story. So it could be how I learned to become a writer. Right? It could be how I immigrated to a new country or some crisis I went through. And they would teach them the whole thing and it would end up in a video. They, they initially taught it in iMovie. Now they teach it in the final cut. I have no idea how. Not, They're amazing not, not teachers. Yet. Well, that's, that's much harder. So they still work and they do great, fantastic work. Go to storycenter.org and check it out. Um, and that's, so the tool for there is basically video. Um, but since they did this, we've had the huge growth of social media, which gives us all kinds of tools. And we've had the growth of gaming, because gaming is a storyteller. Well, if you play Mass Effect, if you play uh, you know, Grand Theft Auto or whatever, the story can be bad, <laughs> but it's a story with it characters, with a plot, yes, and the difference is you get to interact with it. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I know a professor in Pennsylvania teaches medieval history, mm -hmm. and he has his students make games. And the trick is, in his class, physical archaeology matters. They study um, uh, ruins of chapels, of uh, fortresses, of castles. And so he has his students make a little game where you, the player, have to go into this place and explore it. So the students had to study the site and then learn how to make the game and build that. And then he would test them by playing the game. Um, so that's the interactive part where they get to be the one who goes, you know, they walk into a chapel and figure go left or go right and they learn as they go. Um, so, I mean, gaming is another, the, the challenge of gaming is that many games are hard to make they're very expensive. So you have to find tools that are more affordable than that. and there are a bunch, so that's okay. First, you want to think, is the teacher going to make stories, or will the students make stories? Those are both great, they're just very, very different. So we have teachers who have made stories that explain themselves. Um, you know, how I came to be a chemist, or, you know, why I fell in love with photography. A way of humanizing themselves and connecting with the students. Or they can make content. Uh, one of the first workshops I did was a historian who did a, a story about his subject, which was um, Central African history. You know, just a way to introduce that to people. Uh, I know another chemist who did a story about his research. It's fantastic. It was very, very detailed uh, chemical work. And it was really compelling, really good stuff. You have the students do it. And then it's different because it's like having them make a poster or writing a paper. You're having them make a story. And as a teacher, you can assess that work because the story has to involve the class. Uh, for example, I was looking at a story uh, which was uh, for an environmental studies class. And the student had to reflect on her experience of a certain um, body of water. Uh, I think it was a river. And so when you go through the story, you can hear her talk about details of tides, depth, chemistry, but then also she has to make it a good story. Uh, and, and she has to use the technology the right way. So, you know, basic, basic video stuff, right? You know, does, does the, uh, when she's speaking, does the visual map that? Um, you know, when you see a picture, is there enough time to look at it? Are there credits when you need credits? And, um, so, the, why would you do all this? Well, one reason is if you, the two reasons I mentioned before, uh, for media, media, if media literacy matters, and also developing student voice. If you want a student to develop their sense of self, that's one way. Yeah. yeah. But on top of that, if you ask someone to tell a story about anything, they think about that thing differently. Uh, for example, if you go to a factory and you say, okay, guys, tell us how you make cars, they'll tell you. If you say, Tell me about the worst day you ever had in the factory. They'll tell you a story right away, and you'll learn something different. They'll tell you about somebody who is now very important. They might not be the boss, but they, they're really important. So they'll tell you about their emotions, they'll tell you about how something works, and you'll learn a lot more. So if you tell a student, okay, tell me a story about archaeology, or about biology, or about you know, uh, French history, or whatever. They have to rethink cognitively. They have to rethink all the data, put it all together into a new sequence. That's a very productive way of doing it. So that's something to do. But you ask for advice. 
let me give you two pieces of advice. One is very few teachers can do this by themselves. They need to find help on campus. And that could be a professional staff member. Uh, it could be having the students teach each other. Uh, it could be um, if, the, if there's somebody else on campus who just happens to be great at this. But it's a really good idea to have somebody to help out. Um, and there are a lot of ways of doing this. Uh, second is to be really careful about time. Uh, because this can take a lot of time to make. So you have to schedule it into your syllabus, and you might want to assign time outside of class for it. So maybe have a, in the uh, uh, biblioteca, there's a learning commons on the ground floor. Here. So if you go there, maybe every Thursday night, um, some brilliant videographer uh, is there teaching you know, how to use video. So I could tell my students, go there every Thursday night to, to learn, for example. So. Yeah. That would free up time for the professor to be in class. 